SummerSlam is supposed to be the biggest party of the summer for WWE. I usually call it the biggest scam of the summer for WWE, a.k.a. Summer Scam. And right now, with the way WWE TV is going on Monday and Friday night, things are not all that exciting for WWE. But if you look at the SummerSlam match card, the proposed match card, from what we know based on television... It certainly is not shaping up to be an exciting part of WWE Summer. Right now, there are six matches planned for the biggest party that WWE throws all year. They include Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. This is match number three, by the way. Stipulation to be added. We still don't have an explanation as to why. Brock Lesnar attack Cody Rhodes. So, four months of this, and it means absolutely nothing for Cody Rhodes, and it's actually made him feel that much more worse on WWE TV. Trish Stratus versus Becky Lynch. This will continue their feud. Hopefully, it will end their feud. I can't wait for this feud to be off television. I can't wait for Trish to be off television. She is miserable as a heel on Monday night. Asuka defends the WWE Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair in a triple threat match. Gunther more than likely will defend the Intercontinental Championship against Drew McIntyre as he is chasing the Hunky Tonk Men's record all-time reign. Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler, a battle of former tag team partners who just lost their tag team titles to Liv Morgan and Smiley Raquel Rodriguez. And on top of what we know here, there are other matches that are being planned as well. As we saw on Friday, Sheamus versus Austin Theory, more than likely for the United States Championship. Ricochet called out Logan Paul to Monday night. That is probably taking place in Detroit. We don't know what Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are going to do with the Tag Team Championships. Imperium or somebody else stepping up to the plate for the Tag Team Championships. Edge is back on Friday night at Madison Square Garden on the Grayson Waller effect. He may be wrestling Grayson Waller for all we know at SummerSlam. Right now, on paper, it doesn't look all that impressive. It doesn't. And it just goes to show you that after WrestleMania, WWE, storyline-wise and booking-wise, they have absolutely gone downhill. Their premium live events have been great. On paper, this shit sucks. But SummerSlam more than likely will end up delivering because WWE's had a nice little stretch of premium live events that have delivered in 2023. But right now, SummerSlam is not looking all that impressive. Let me know what you guys think of the match card. Am I forgetting anything? Am I leaving anybody off the card? What would you do as far as SummerSlam goes? Would you change anything? Let me know and sound off in the comments section down below. Now, speaking of SummerSlam, Logan Paul... He will be on Monday Night Raw to answer Ricochet's face-to-face meetup or challenge on Raw. And Ricochet versus Logan Paul is coming directly out of what happened at the Royal Rumble and at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view with that big Spanish fly spot through the table that was supposed to go off like that, but it ended up being a botch. And then they filmed a backstage brawl between the two, which is leading us to Monday Night. As previously reported... Logan Paul will be working SummerSlam in Detroit. Ricochet is obviously his opponent. And speaking on the Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that Ricochet and Logan Paul is indeed planned for SummerSlam. The original idea behind the build was for them to have a viral moment with the Spanish Fly spot through the tables in the Money in the Bank ladder match. But that didn't go as planned due to the spot being botched. Dave Meltzer says, and I quote, Ricochet is wrestling Logan Paul at SummerSlam. If you watch the TV, you kind of know that. The idea was that spot that we talked about was supposed to go viral and it would go crazy and that was going to lead to the match. People did see it, but it wasn't as smooth to lead to the match, so they did the angle over the weekend instead with the backstage brawl. They're going to shoot the angle next Monday on Raw to lead to the match. So instead of doing a marquee match for Logan Paul, I think they want him to do an incredible athletic match. Ricochet's your guy if you want to do that one. 
end quote. Do we see L.A. Knight get involved in this? Because L.A. Knight had a problem with Ricochet and Logan Paul as well, or more than likely, uh, Ricochet. Uh, I don't know what's going on with him. You could have done something else with him, but this probably is the best for Ricochet. On the other hand, L.A. Knight, you know, L.A. Knight and Logan Paul had that little, you know, face-to-face before Money in the Bank for a couple of weeks. He fits good into this, just as good as Ricochet does. Do you include him and make it a triple threat match, or do you leave L.A. Knight off the card altogether? I'm not really uh, here to tell you that L.A. Knight should be world champion and this and that, but he most definitely deserves a spot on the card. He absolutely deserves a spot at SummerSlam. What you do with him, I don't know. But I went back to the SummerSlam match card. Sheamus and Austin Theory right now by what we saw on television is the plan. I would actually I would actually take Sheamus out of that and put LA Knight in there for the United States Championship. And I would have him win the United States Championship and take that title off of Austin Theory as he's done nothing. But Ricochet and Logan Paul, depending on if they add L.A. Knight or not, if it's a singles match between these two, it should be fantastic. And this is the type of guy that I want to see Logan Paul in there with. They are very comparable to each other, and they are going to create something memorable. So I have no problem with that. But, you know, everything that we saw with L.A. Knight going into Money in the Bank, coming out of Money in the Bank, how over he is, his thing with Logan Paul, his problem with Logan Paul, he does make a lot of sense in this as well. So we'll see what WWE does with all of this situation. But that Spanish fly was always the intended spot to lead to a match with Logan Paul and Ricochet at SummerSlam. Should be very interesting to see, to see what happens there. Drew McIntyre, he's rumored to be wrestling for the Intercontinental title at SummerSlam against Gunther. Melter talked about Drew McIntyre's contract situation on The Observer Live. McIntyre's deal is believed to be expiring at WWE in early 2024 at Money in the Bank and the post-show scrum. Triple H was asked about McIntyre, and he basically said that McIntyre uh, was out basically licking his wounds, getting shit fixed, and he didn't really allude to anything as far as the contract, but all he did say was kind of dumb down the reports and say all of the reports about Drew McIntyre's demise, 75% of them are bullshit, And McIntyre ended up laughing at most of them at the end of the day. Of course, WWE would put down its media and all of the dirt sheets because they're up here and they think we're down here. But Meltzer talked about this on The Observer Live, and he says this, and I quote, in regards to Drew McIntyre. He didn't sign a new contract, but that doesn't mean he won't. It doesn't mean you won't. I mean, his contract has got months to go. If he... But I mean, the thing was, is it's like the way Michael Cole and Paul Levesque talked about it, and they're in like, he hasn't signed the offer. There is something to it. But you know, as far as like what's going to happen, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. With the time that he has off, I think that they could legally extend him him through WrestleMania. Probably not, but it's going to be pretty damn close. It's a long ways off, but he has not signed a new deal. It's obvious he's wrestling Gunther at SummerSlam. That's what Dave Meltzer says on the Observer Live, end quote. Um, I did mention this uh, a couple of times, actually, several times. uh, With with his time being out, you know, a lot of that has a lot of truth to it. I do believe he was out for contract. I do believe he was out for creative. I I am going to believe that portion of the reports. Yes, was he injured? I I think so as well. But, you know, a little bit of that time was probably to heal up And a little bit of that time was probably out because he was trying to renegotiate a deal. He was very unhappy. He didn't have any direction in WWE. And for that portion of the contract, at least WWE is going to tack on time on top of his existing deal. Will that come to WrestleMania? Who knows? Like Meltzer says, and I believe Meltzer, will it be through WrestleMania? Who knows? Probably, probably not. But it's going to be pretty damn close to WrestleMania. So, If his contract is supposed to be up in January 2024, he just got extended a couple of months because he spent a couple of months out on the shelf with injury and then also trying to renegotiate his deal and then being unhappy about creative, which he did not want and did not want to come back to television. So we'll see what happens with McIntyre. But does he beat Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship? This is the other thing. Is he coming back? And is WWE going to give him the Intercontinental Championship if he is not committed to a new contract. That's the thing people are not really talking about. If he's not committed 
to a WWE contract and has not re-signed when they want him to re-sign, are they going to give him the Intercontinental Championship and take that title away from Gunther? As far as I'm concerned, Gunther should not, should not lose the championship because right now there is nobody even on his level. But I could see WWE taking this away from Gunther, putting it on McIntyre to make him happy so that he does end up signing. But it does go both ways on that. But I also think on the other end, you got Gunther up until this point. He's literally going to be a month away, a month and like a day or two away from breaking the Honky Tonk Man's record. Do you take this title off of Gunther and put it on Drew McIntyre literally right at the end of the road before he breaks the all-time IC title reign from the Honky Tonk Man? I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. They could prolong it. They could prolong this as well. Nobody's really talking about this either. You could do Imperium. You could do Gunther. You could do uh, Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner or Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. I'm still calling them their NXT names. You could do all of Imperium versus Drew McIntyre, Matt Riddle, and a returning Randy Orton. Nobody's really talking about this either. WWE, we saw Brock Lesnar come back. We have a, a lot of different things happening in WWE. Right now, McIntyre came back. They didn't want to do everything at Money in the Bank. John Cena showed up. They didn't want to do too many surprises on the same show. A lot of people are anticipating Randy Orton coming back. He could show up at SummerSlam. They could have a big six-man tag at SummerSlam, get the ball rolling on that, prolong the IC title reign, have McIntyre take it off Gunther by doing the match later on down the road and giving us this big six-man tag team match. Because on Raw, if you watch Raw, Matt Riddle and Drew McIntyre kind of form this alliance against Imperium. They're going to need a third, and that third, more than likely, Randy Orton would make the most sense to have this six-man tag team match go on at SummerSlam. That's also a possibility. We don't really know. So if they want to prolong the IC title reign, have McIntyre take it off of Gunther, and, and you're not going to do it at SummerSlam. You're not going to be ready for SummerSlam. You want him to break the record. Let's prolong it and give it another month. Have Randy Orton come back, do the six-man tag at SummerSlam instead of the one-on-one -on -one match between McIntyre and Gunther. A lot of things to really discuss and talk about, man. There's a lot of possibilities going into SummerSlam, so we will see what happens there. But uh, McIntyre's contract, he's still with the WWE. Being that he's back on television does not mean he re opt and re-signed a new deal. He's back because, basically, if he continues to stay out, they're going to add more time back on top of his current WWE deal that is right now existing. And Triple H, he was absent from Monday Night Raw. I see people talking about this and making a big deal about it. I don't really think it's that big of a deal, but it was in the news. And Triple H was not present at Monday Night Raw. Fightful Select reported this news, and the report noted that several people at the show stated that they hadn't expected Triple H's absence, although he was said to be in a good mood while backstage at Saturday's Money in the Bank PLE. Those in the company claim that there was nothing to Triple H missing Raw and a planned night away with the expectation that he will be at Friday's SmackDown. It's unclear exactly why he missed the show, but Bruce Pritchard ran the show in Triple H's place. Vince McMahon did not make the trip over to London for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, nor was he backstage at Raw. That doesn't really mean anything because Vince didn't really feel like he needed to be there. He could run the show remotely and tell Triple H exactly what he wants to have happen on the show. That's been done for uh, many, many, many months now. So I'm not really concerned about that. If he's not there, that doesn't mean Vince McMahon is, uh, you know, oh my God, all right, I'm going to be a Titan Tower doing my own thing. No, Vince McMahon, if he's not there, more than likely he's running the show remotely. Bruce Pritchard ran the show. It definitely felt more like a Bruce Pritchard, Vince McMahon run show than a Triple H run show. I'm not really taking this as a serious thing. Maybe he had something else that he needed to do. He couldn't make the flight out on time. And maybe it was just one of those rare situations where he stayed in London he had something else to take care of. He didn't make the flight back with the rest of the talent to make it back in time for Monday Night Raw to be there. He'll be there on Friday night at Madison Square Garden for SmackDown. Not, not really that big of a deal, but it was in the news, and I see people making a big deal about it. Oh, Triple H missed Raw. This is the beginning of the end. Bruce Pritchard's running Raw. Vince McMahon's on his way back imminently. Triple H is going to be fired, pal. No, I don't really consider this a big deal, but he was absent for what reason? Nobody knows, but he'll be there at Madison Square Garden on Friday for what should be a big SmackDown episode this Friday. That's all the news I got for you guys. It's been a very, very slow week with the 4th of July holiday just wrapping up. If you need any more news, keep it right here 
on the podcast. I got more news coming this weekend. Hit that thumbs up. Let's try for a thousand likes minimum. Follow me on social media at JD from NY206, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Go check out all the other content on the channel. There is plenty of it for you to catch up on. And the next time you see me, we'll be live from the OTS Beer Garden right here on Off the Script. Smackdown live from Madison Square Garden tomorrow night right here on OTS. I'll see you guys later.